The overall goal of the, the 2013 GT500 was definitely to try to balance the vehicle between power, brakes, dynamics. And one of the things that we worked on to um, balance that is definitely we had to add weight in some areas, such as brakes, but we also had to t had the opportunity to optimize that and take a lot of weight out. So as we go through, or as I go through the presentation, I'll highlight a couple areas where we did take some weight out. The transmission, many, many parts in the transmission have been upgraded. The uh, helix angle on the gears has been changed to give us more torque capacity. We've upgraded a number of the bearings internally. In fact, in some positions, we've gone from a separate uh, taper bearing, needle bearing uh, itself, to separating it to a straight needle and a thrust bearing. Um, we've upgraded the output shaft and the counter shaft. The output shaft spline went from 28 tooth to 40 tooth. Um, we also have a new tail shaft housing because of the unique application for us and also because of the uh, one-piece drive shaft, which I'll talk about here in a little bit. We added uh, an internal pump that, that pumps the oil from the transmission into the cooler, which I'll talk about here in a little bit. And then the clutch itself, we went from a 250 millimeter to 260 millimeter dual disc ZF clutch. The carbon fiber drive shaft is, uh, I think, an awesome piece and it's a great uh, piece of work, uh, of artwork. It has 36% higher torque capacity. It weighs 14.4 pounds lighter than the outgoing two-piece steel drive shaft that also had a center bearing. And it also was a key enabler to give us the, the 200 mile an hour top speed because that particular part was one that would go into residence uh, between 155 and 200. So this, because of its stiffness and its light weight, is way above the top speed of the car. The rear axle, uh, the Torsen limited slip is an option. We changed the final drive to the 331, and then we went to a larger head bearing. It's about 15% bigger in OD, and it also got deeper. Drivability, as you can imagine, having this much power and torque, we wanted to also make sure this car was still drivable on a daily basis. So we really spent a lot of time working on the things that you touch, not only the throttle map to make sure the car is easy to drive both on the road and on the track, but also the things that you push and feel all the time. The clutch, we wanted to make sure the efforts didn't go up real high. As you increase clamp load, you, you obviously have to have a higher pedal uh, or pedal force, but we worked really hard with optimizing all the parts to still keep the efforts in the 30-pound range. We revised the shifter ratio to lower the efforts a little bit and make it easier to shift. And we optimized the throttle map, as I said, for, for smoother acceleration. The cooling system itself, this has probably been the key challenge that we've had uh, in the program um, since the beginning. With that much power, some of the things that we went through and changed was uh, we opened up the, the grills, which certainly lets more airflow in. Uh, we added a external air to oil uh, engine oil cooler. So that does two things. It helps reduce the engine oil temp itself, but it also reduces the amount of temperature that uh, goes into the, the water that cools the block. The old system used to use a water to oil, so it used the water of the cooling system to cool the oil, and that heat would go into the coolant. So now we've separated that, and we've gotten two improvements because of it. We wanted to also make sure the car was very balanced. So not only did we want a lot of power, but you have to be able to not put the power to the ground and also drive the car and have it balanced with the handling and be able to stop the car as well. We revised the entire chassis. Eric Zinkowski, Dave Harmonson, and... Gene did a wonderful job retuning the whole chassis to make sure it balances with the, the amount of power that we have. Brakes. Brakes is another key part. Um, we've gone through and we've upgraded the rotors. They've gone from a 355 to a 380 OD in the front. It's continued with the stiff monoblock front caliper. Uh, we have 19% larger front rotor swept area, 31% more thermal mass, 33% more front pad area, and 8% more effective radius. One thing I just wanted to reemphasize is the, the advanced testing and CAE methods and techniques that we used on this car. Of course, we used all the normal things that, that the normal um, uh, automakers use, finite element analysis to make sure that the parts are uh, designed properly before we actually build them. We use CFD to make sure that, uh, to simulate fluid flow to air flow for downforce and cooling. We used lap time simulation like a lot of uh, race teams use. We've had very, very detailed models where we could get our car to uh, be simulated in a lap time on any track, uh, anywhere by just changing the track 
parameters and we've had correlated models that allow us to do a lot of things on our desktop without actually going there. CAD is a normal thing that we make sure that all the parts fit together and move together before you build them. The seven post shaker that I was met mentioning to you it helped us uh, really tune the, the sport mode and make sure that we had the tire in, in contact with the, con the cement as much as possible. And we went to multiple wind tunnels across the U.S., including wind shear and our own wind tunnel in Dearborn. Thoughts? Well, my first thoughts always is it too late to stop production. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> the uh, the power you expect, uh, the brakes are ridiculous. You have no idea the brakes are as good as they are. Uh, and you've given us three break three point uh, braking marks out there. You can cheat a lot on that. Yeah. There's a whole lot more brake in there than, than you expect it to be for a car of this size. Yeah, uh, pretty impressive. Pretty uh, impressive. How about the overall handling balance? It's it's really good. I mean, I, I don't really know how you guys make a live axle work this well, but uh, you do. And uh, the turn in is good. Somehow you've got the front end to, uh, to stick, and that's, to me, the biggest change in the 500 uh, to this generation is the car is much less of a drag race car and more of a track car. So uh, lost 302 guys, I guess, better watch this. All right. Thank you.